Hello everybody, MD Polo here. Thanks for joining me. On the table today we have the Springfield Armories Hellcat. This is a gun that has caused a lot of commotion. It's been all over YouTube. It's gotten in the hands of pretty much anybody that requested one as I came to find out. And I received this one back in uh, early November this year. So about a little bit over a month ago. So November 2019 when we're filming this. And it was actually kind of shocked when they when Springfield said yes to sending me the gun. I contacted them. They didn't call me, of course. I'm still a pretty small channel. And um, so I was pretty shocked when they said, yes, we'll send you one. And even more shocked when I received it and found out that I get to keep it. So in the spirit of full disclosure, I want you to know the Springfield did send the gun. I requested it and it's mine to keep. So thank you, Springfield. When I spoke to them, I made sure they understood that I am and I will say what I want and what I think about the pistol. The fact that I got it for free is not going to influence my opinion on it, regardless of what other people may think, whether it does or not. And if they don't like what I have to say and they choose not to send me another gun in the future, I don't really care. Um, I want you to know what I think truthfully about the pistol. So with that out of the way, you can see on the table we have the Springfield and you also see the holster that I've been carrying it in for almost a month now and that is from Phalanx Concealment and I'll do a separate video on the holster and the, and the Hellcat but also the holster was um, sent to the channel by Phalanx by my request. I've been a client of his for a while now, a paying client I used his holsters for uh, my P365s for the SIGs and absolutely love them. So if you want to check them out, Phalanx Concealment, fantastic quality. We'll do a video on how they work together with a Hellcat. But I wanted you to know that I've been carrying it for almost uh, for over a month and it's been exclusively in this holster. So let's get that out of the way. And now on the table we have by itself the Hellcat in a regular box. I did not get the, the big media kit that some of the bigger channels got with the safe and with the optics ready, and none of that. It's just a plain old Springfield cardboard box. And inside you get the second mag, you have a nice range bag and that's about it. Lock and that's all you get. So now let's dive into the Springfield Hellcat itself. When it was released in September of 2019, right away it became the highest capacity micro compact 9mm in the world. It has a 3 inch barrel, it measures a mere 1 inch wide, and it weighs just a little bit over 18 ounces empty. So, but with a capacity of 11 rounds in the flush fit mag and by the way the guns all that you're going to see several guns on the table today they've all been checked clear so with a flush mag you get nine, uh, 11 rounds and with the 13 rounds with a I'm sorry with a bigger mag with extended base plate you get 13 rounds so 13 rounds for such a small gun that is pretty amazing it is a gun that is for sure and obviously geared towards competing with a SIG P365. We'll go through that as well. Now I'm going to try to get the, keep this video um, somewhat short. I'm not sure it's going to work. There's a lot to say and also compare it to several other guns. So the Springfield uh, Hellcat was manufactured in Croatia by HS Product. And um, so it was designed by Springfield here in the U.S., but is manufactured in Croatia. The gun does feel like a tank, and it is solid. It is a bit on the heavy side, but you definitely feel like you have something solid when you grip into this pistol. Springfield kept this pretty quiet. It was a project that it took him two years to bring to market. And as far as I knew, nobody really knew about that they were working on it outside of Springfield. So they kept it very quiet, and then all of a sudden, boom, it just flooded the market with PR. 
the pistols themselves are still pretty uh, scarce to find. You can special order them and some stores will have a, a, a sample or two. But uh, my understanding is that they'll be hitting the market pretty soon. So to getting into some of the specs, uh, of course, it's a 9mm striker fired semi-auto. And let me just grab it and let you look at, walk it around as I'm reading the specs. It has, uh, like I said, it's a 9mm, comes with two mags, 11 plus 1 in the pipe or 13 plus 1 in the pipe. The barrel itself is 13, in, is, uh, 13 inches, 3 inches long. The overall length of the pistol is 6 inches. The height is going to be 4.12 inches. The width, not including the controls, it's going to be 0.88 inches, so pretty much on the thin side. The weight of it with the flush fit mag is going to be at 18.3 ounces. And with the extended mag, which is the one you see on the table on the gun itself right now, is 18.6 ounces. The finish on the slide, it is, well, the slide itself is stainless steel, uh, made out of uh, machine from billet, stainless, and coated with melanite. So melanite coating on it. The sights are getting a lot of attention, and rightly so. And we'll go through more details on all this, but you can see the sight picture there. And the sights are a Mariglow Pro Glow and they have the tritium in the front and it's a tritium night sight in the front see the I'm trying to get the and there it is I'm trying to get the focus to work so it's a very bright fluorescent yellow in the front very easy to see and a u notch in the back so that would be your sight picture right there but people were wondering, and I've been asked questions, uh, what kind of sights are on it, and they are a Mary Glow Pro Glow. The gun has two safeties built into it. Of course, it doesn't come with a manual safety frame or slide mounted safety, but it does have your regular trigger lever here, and it has a striker pin block. It comes in two models, as I may have mentioned earlier. And uh, the standard model, which is the one you have, you see here, and the one that is called the OSP. And the OSP is the optics ready. So you can get the Hellcat with an optics ready cut already built into it. And we just happen to have one here. And this gun has been safety checked as well. It is clear. So here you can see the optics cut on the Hellcat. So you just remove those two screws on top, the plate comes off, and you can mount one of your small red dots. So for $30 more, you can get the Hellcat, the OSP, that is red dot capable. And if you choose not to use the red dot, you just don't uh, take the plate off. But later on, if you change your mind, you're able to just take the plate off and use it versus the regular Hellcat, which does not have that capability. There you go. So this is the regular, this is the OSP. $30 difference, why not just get the one that is cut and ready. So there you go, two Hellcats in one video, huh? Play with the focus, sorry about that. The two micro red dots that Springfield recommends for the shield right now is the, the shield for the Hellcat is the shield RMSC and also the JP Enterprises J point. Now let's talk about the mags. One of the things that makes this gun so special is the capacity. And the mags it comes with two mags, the 13 rounder, they're both steel. Very good quality. Let me play, see with the focus there. Steel, this is the extended base plate. It's got a plus, plus two down here, 13 rounds. 
and then you've got the 10 round the 11 rounder so right away you get one more round in, uh, compared to the p365 because the p365 you can have the 12 round mag so here you got 13 and it comes with a 10 round mag and here you got 11. now it, you also get with a with a hellcat you get a little pinky extension and here it is it was, sorry oops just bumped you so you get the little pinky extension that you can very easily replace on the on the bottom of the of the 11 round mag it does not add a round but it just gives you a little bit more real estate to grip the gun because it is it is quite small we'll get into all that following the slide like i mentioned earlier is machine from billet steel with a melanite finish. It has front and rear serrations. Let me close it up for you. So it's got front and rear serrations, which are very positive. Um, they do their job, they're not sharp, and the serrations wrap all the way around the top. There you go. So I think Springfield did a good job with the serrations. It's interesting they have them all the way around the top. You can find a loaded chamber indicator, a little peephole here. If you need to figure out whether your gun is loaded or not, you can take a look in there as well. It does have an accessory rail, although it is quite small. And none of my regular lights will fit here. Even the old light Valkyrie Mini will not work with this. So if you're going to put a light on this, you're going to have to go with something like the Viridian C5, something little like that. But it does have a rail. The barrel is, uh, like I mentioned before, is a three inch barrel and it's a precision hammer forge barrel with the same melanite finish as the slide. And there you can see the wear that it's had. The gun has 800 rounds through it right now, so keep that in context as you're looking at it. So let me show you here. Play with the focus, let it focus a little bit. There, there you go. So that's, that's the wear. It does have a polished feed ramp. It's actually pretty highly polished. Let me close it up so you can see the barrel hood and what kind of wear that's had through 800 rounds. And I know 800 rounds is not a ton, but it's enough to give you an idea. It's got the extractor. The recoil system, the recoil management system in this is a dual captive recoil spring. It's got a full length guide rod that feature, and it features a standoff device. So as you can see here, it sticks out a bit. Let's see if I can play with the focus, it's not helping me. There it is. So as you can see, it's, it protrudes a, big, a bit from the frame and it's got serrations on it. You can see the texture. Let me see here, there, oh, there it is. So you can see the texture and how it protrudes a bit from the front of the pistol. And that is not a design flaw from Springfield, that is a standoff device. And yes, I'm going to muscle my hand and the gun is safety checked, darn focus. But if you were to press it against something and have to fire against somebody that is pressing against your gun, it's not going to push it out of battery and then your, your gun becomes useless. So standoff device built into the Hellcat. As I mentioned earlier, the sights. It's got a U dot. It's got a U notch in the back with a dot, yellow dot in the front. There are Mary Glow, Pro Glow, high visibility tritium night sights. The rear sight is just a plain U notch. They call it a U dot, which is drift adjustable and it, they are metal sights. The rear is not a night sight, so you're, you're only going to get one dot in the front at night. It would have been, to me, it would have been kind of cool if they put a little tritium dot or something at the top of the U, something where you can have full night sights. 
but this is what you get and it's actually pretty good. The trigger on the Hellcat is, eh, what can I tell you about the trigger on the Hellcat? It's a flat trigger, so that's comfortable. It's got the safety dingus here and it is a bit of a heavy trigger. So it goes right there. So not too much of, a, of, of travel and you hit the wall. Now it is, it is a pretty heavy solid wall and you really got to put pressure on it you got to break through that wall. And there you go. And the reset all the way out here. So it's got some, it's got some ways to go before it hits, then it breaks again and re resets right there. It's very audio, audible, it's very tactile, so it's not a bad reset at all. The trigger is just heavy. There it is. So uh, this one breaks at 6.2 pounds and uh, when I first got it and after 500 rounds it started breaking a little bit over five and a half. So the thing about it is that you got to really press to get through that wall. Whether that will change with more rounds through it, I don't know. The mag release moving a little bit further down. The mag release is very positive. It works just fine. And it just fits out the mags with no problem. It's got a bit of a contour right here. So it's flush with the frame and it's got serrations on it as well. There are no serrations anywhere around the trigger guard. And as I mentioned, you got the rail, you got a single little rail there. It's got a pretty pronounced beaver tail now moving down to the grip area. It is black polymer. I'm talking about the grip. And it's got Springfield's quote adaptive grip technology. Little pyramids that are in different sizes, some taller than others, and it's some taller and some shorter. The taller ones are supposed to have a flat top in order to not hurt you, bother you as you're carrying the gun. And then you've got uh, smaller ones that are a little bit sharper. So when you carry it, it's supposed to be smooth against your skin. But when you grip it, it's when you actually hit the, the pointy pyramids. Um, of course, nothing is painful. It's, it's, pretty, it's fine. Um, actually, I'm, I'm gonna put some photos up that I took and it was high tech and I actually used the magnifying feature on my iPhone uh, to take a screenshot of what I actually, how close I could get to this so you can see it. So it's good, it's a good grip texture. I wish that it was a little bit more aggressive and we'll talk about that when uh, I get to the things that I did not like about the Hellcat. Now moving down to, well, let's just dive into it now. What, I, what didn't I like about the Hellcat? Um, the grip, let me put the, the mag so I can talk about it. The grip itself, you have to really squeeze to, to hold on to the gun. And for me, it rubs the air. When I'm using the extended mag, it just rubs my little pinky raw when I'm shooting it, unless I'm holding it like with a death grip. And again, that gives other issues with accuracy when you're doing that. When you're using the flush fit or the pinky extension, you don't have that issue because you've got a floating pinky. But now you've got a two finger grip on a pistol that is pretty snappy. So not thrilled with the grip. Now let me talk about something else that I haven't heard anybody else talk about. And I don't know if it's just my hand, but I wanted to mention it.
It does have a pretty high and deep beaver tail, so you're, in theory, you're supposed to be able to get pretty deep into the gun like this and mitigate recoil, okay? But when I do that, when I put my hand high like that, I, I don't know if you can see, it, it creates a gap between the grip and my hand. My, the palm of my hand does not fit flush with the grip. Okay, now if I do want to make it flush and grip it so my, there's full contact all the way around, then my hand does not go, I don't know if you can see it, but it creates a gap here. My hand does not go up into the pistol like this. The grip moves my hand down and away from the grip, from the, from the top, from the beaver tail. So, and again, it could be something that, that is just my hand but can you see that can you see that gap there no matter how I move it if I'm gripping it and I'm using my left hand but if so because li the light seems to be working better there's that gap that I'm talking about instead of gripping it and moving it in and up you see if I want to put pressure and hold on to it you see how the gun moves down and I'm not trying to create a, pro a problem where it does not exist but I am feeling that when I shoot, when I'm grabbing the gun, it creates that gap under the beaver tail. So anyway, for me, and I'm just talking about me, my experience, my anatomy, the way it fits in my hand. So it is, two of the negatives that I found is that grip texture around my pinky finger, and then when I do choke on it hard so it doesn't rub me, then it separates the beaver tail from the palm of my hand. The other thing that I'm not too thrilled about, but it's something we need to keep an eye on, on is the holster wear. Now, it's supposed to have the melanite finish, which is, is very durable, but I've only been carrying this for a month. And if the camera is working, the light is cooperating, you can see I'm already starting to, find, to see holster wear. Now it's not a big deal. It's a carry gun. It's, a, it's something that is a it's a tool, and it's um, it's not going to affect it whatsoever the um, the performance of the pistol. But I wanted to show you that after 800 rounds and about a month of carrying it in a holster that was designed, it fits it perfectly. I am starting to see somewhere on the gun. Just walking you around it. And on the top, it does have the Springfield logo right above on, on the top of the slide. Now moving into the shooting impressions on the Hellcat. One of the reasons why I've taken my time in putting this video out is because I wanted to put more rounds through it than I normally do on a first impressions of a gun. It is because some days I shot it and I loved it, and some days I shot it and I hated it. It is a snappy gun, I'm not going to lie to you. It, it's got the heavy trigger, and it is a snappy gun. However, it is very accurate. It, it is a strange relationship. It's, um, I'm trying to think of how to put this into words. It's a strange relationship because it doesn't feel very comfortable in the hand. It's snappy. But it's accurate. When you shoot it, it just it snaps, but it comes right back down to zero. And it snaps and it comes back down to zero easily. So if you're gonna compare it to the SIG P365, the P365 is also very accurate, but it's a bit of a softer shooter than the Hellcat. So I'm, as I'm discussing my impressions, I'm just letting you walk around and take a look at the whole gun. I'm not sure if I discussed that it's got those landing pads up here that are serrated. It's got the same texture as the grip right above the takedown lever. And there it is on both sides. So we talked about the shooting impressions. The Hellcat is plus P capable. 
and it ate everything that I put through it that I had at my disposal here for the test. This was including uh, what I shot was SMB 115 grain, Blazer uh, 124 grain, and my favorite, the Fort Scott Munitions 80 grain. I also put several boxes of the Federal Premium HST 124 and the Underwood Extreme Penetrator 115 grain. And it ate everything, not one malfunction in 800 rounds. So that's pretty good, that's a good start. It's a gun that only time will tell whether it's gonna be you know, reliable, bomb proof, but this one has been perfect. Now I recently found out that Springfield, through a Springfield uh, press release that in November of 2018, um, there's this guy, Clay Martin, he's got this channel off the reservation. He did a, a short-term test on, the, on this Hellcat, and in a, in a period of two days, they put 10,000 rounds through the Hellcat, and they did not have any gun-related issues whatsoever. They had four, I believe, uh, ish, uh, problems, and they were ammo-related because um, as soon as that same bullet was put through the gun one more time, it fired. Um, it's got the little Springfield logo at the bottom of the mags. So 10,000 rounds through two days. It was pretty amazing and zero problems. So the gun is built like a tank. Concealing the Hellcat was no problem whatsoever. As I mentioned to you, I've been carrying it in a phalanx concealment holster. And this is what it looks like. It is easy to hide, easy to reach in this holster. So no problems whatsoever. And if you guys want to see a closer look or a video on the Hellcat with a holster, I can certainly put that together for you guys. So now let's take a look, and I'm getting pretty long-winded here on the video, but what, let's take a look at how it compares to other popular uh, carry pistols out there. And this is something I'm considering doing another video about, and, this, and that is the overthinking or what the gun review channels and the manufacturers have hyped up to be the different categories and the different types of carry guns, and you can't compare one against the other personally, and forgive me, but I think that's a bunch of crap. The bottom line is these are guns that are made to protect our lives, and they're not bullseye shooting guns. They're guns to be shot at, if needed, at short range, under extreme stress. And you think you're gonna have time to figure out whether the little pyramids are working or not, or whether you have enough daylight between your front and rear sight? you're gonna be absolutely stressed trying to save your life and shooting somebody at short distance. So at the bottom, the, at, at the end of the day, what matters is, can you get your hand on the gun and will it fire to save your life? So I don't care about what category it is or what gun, the, you know, what the manufacturers call them. So enough on that rant. But here we've got the, the Glock 43X and all the guns have been safety checked. So comparing it to the Glock 43X, here you have it. It is obvious to see the size difference. 10 rounds, 13 plus one, 10 plus one. So taking a look at it from the back, you can see they're almost, this, the Hellcat is even a little bit shorter with 13 rounds versus 10 and there it is. So that's what it looks like against the Glock 43X. Another popular, of course, is going to be the shield. And of course, it's been safety check. So here's the shield. And with a shield, you got 8 plus 1, 13 plus 1 right now with a Hellcat. And trying to be fair in the comparison. That's what they look like. The shield is thinner, but eight plus one, one versus 13 plus one. And size wise, they're almost identical. 
So that's what the Hellcat looks like against the shield. The other one I brought out, and this one is brand new, it's never ever been shot, is the Taurus, and this is the G2C. Very popular gun. And the Taurus has got also 12 plus one. So it's just one round shy. Here you go. It's one run round shy of the Hellcat. And size wise, playing from the top, the Hellcat is just a little bit smaller. And they're about the same size on the grip. So there's the Taurus G2C. And finally, its main competitor, and I think the reason the Hellcat exists, is the SIG P365. So here you go, the two. 10 plus 1, 13 plus 1. If you make it closer with flush mag, I wish I had the flush mag for the P365, but here you go. 11 plus 1, thir um, 10 plus 1. And like I said, this is the reason the PC365 is the reason the Hellcat exists. The Hellcat is just a little bit longer, but as far as height, they're almost identical. Just the slide, the bottom of the, of the grips are cut in different angles. side view as close as I can. You can see the difference in the angles there. So the 365 from SIG against the Hellcat. So there you have it guys. Um, oh, I almost forgot. How do you take this thing down? Simple. You got the, your, your takedown lever here. You bring the gun back, make sure it's unloaded, bring it back, and you lock it. Then you flip this little, the lever up, you release it, and you fire. And that's how it's taken, it's taken apart. So I'll give you a closer look. And that's the inside of the Hellcat. To put it back together, it's got, you can see here, it's got pretty beefy rails. You put it back together. You go back. Lock it. Bring it down. And since we got it here, and I think I already did that, but it was about half hour ago, let you take a look at this. Now, what do you think? Is that excessive wear for 800 rounds? It does it not matter? How do you think this is doing? I'd love to hear your comments below. And 13 rounds plus one on the pipe here. And let me take, bring out what it, what it currently is, my winter EDC. If you saw my previous video, and this is the CC P07. Now here's the P07. And now the, the reason I'm bringing this out, it's only a two round difference between the two. So that's a different in length. That's the difference in height for two rounds more. So not bad, 13 plus one, 15 plus one. Big difference in size and on weight. So there you have it guys, Springfield Hellcat. What do you think? Thank you so far so much. It's been a longer video than normal, but there was a lot to say and I wanted to make sure I did all the comparisons as well. Bear with me as I went through this. I did my video on a one take only. And um, for the first time I did film some shooting video and I'll pepper the I'm gonna pepper the video 
uh, with the shooting as well. Anyway, thank you very much. Thanks for sticking through the whole thing. And until the next one, God bless. This is my wife shooting the Hellcat. <laughs> so that hit her finger, hurt her fingernails. What What do you think of it? Um, the recoil is stronger than what I'm used to. Yeah. And I don't know if it's just me, but it's just like the recoil is just almost to the point where it hurt my fingernails. Okay, so it, it hurt her fingernails, but if you look at the target. She had one flyer up there, but overall, she also did pretty good with the Hellcat.